Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Bear Wozniak and my adventure guide this, uh, today is kind of a mystery guest. It's, it's amazing that we could even get, a, get him on our show. He's one of the busy, busiest people in the new evangelization. And, and besides that, um, we just got to spend some time together at the Napa Institute. So uh, Dr. Ray Garendi is going to be our guest. He has his own radio show. Uh, I think it's called The Doctor Is In. And he has his own TV show. It's called... I'm going to look it up to make sure I get it right. Living Right with Dr. Ray Garendi. Uh, and the thing about Dr. Ray is a little bit embarrassed about an incident that happened at the Napa Institute. We're going to, we're going to try to bring it up and clear the air. Dr. Ray Garendi, usually do a five-minute monologue, but with you, I want to get you right on as quickly as we can. Aloha, Dr. Ray. Aloha, Bear. How are you? It's, I'm doing great. You know, for those of you who are listening to the EWTN show on Sirius FM or all the podcast apps or on the uh, terrestrial radio shows, but some of you are watching on YouTube, and if you could be watching this on YouTube, you would see, that's at the Bear Wozniak channel, by the way, that Ray Garendi, Ray, Dr. Ray Garendi is in a padded cell today. Is there a reason why they've put you in this padded cell, Ray? Yes, because I'm allowed one call, they said, from my cell. So I said, <laughs> okay, let me go there. It looks so nice and cozy, though. Do you have a little special, t uh, like pet and a teddy bear that, or anything like that? You you get to take in there with you. I had a stuffed dog <laughs> when I was five, and some kids stole it. It was my first trauma. So this is the deep roots of bitterness that you've been having to deal with all your life. I mean, I'll tell you what. I, I, I'm another twelve years of therapy, bear, and I'm 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 going to shed it. Well, I don't think so because you had a major setback. Uh, we had a challenge to a. Uh, to an arm wrestling contest at the Napa Institute in Napa last week. And uh, it was pretty close, but uh, my wife finally, I think, pretty much took you. Would you say she beat you or not? She did, but, but, <laughs> but you know, she goes about 106 pounds, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, she put all of her, all, you know, she's a rodeo girl, so she put all of, her, all of her trick riding skills there. Hey, but, you know, one of the things you taught me, uh, you're a psych you're, you know, psychologist, you know all there is to know about... Um, people and their, their motivation and how to, how to uh, get them to change their behavior. And you showed me something on video that was really hard for me to believe, how when you have someone help you when you're doing pull-ups or push-ups or something, how them counting you down are really enables you. Having someone there really uh, encourages you or strengthens you. How many pull-ups did you do, by the way? My best ever was 32, but I did 27 last week. And that was with your brother helping you by, by counting out the numbers. Well, no, no, no. That, that was legit. Now, with my brother helping me, I found that it's very important. Not only does he count, but that I can stand on his shoulders while he does push-ups. Oh, that's the that trick. That makes a big difference. Okay, well, let's see. That's a little psychological edge. I never, I, I never really understood that in the whole uh, bodybuilding and strength uh, training area. You know, when, when Dr. Ray walks around, it, he just looks like, I don't know. He looks like every part of his body, he's just got, he's hard. You don't want to hug him. It kind of hurts to give him a hug. <laughs> but it, it, you know what's more painful than your hugs, you know, is your jokes. Bear, listen, you're not paying for this. And so you're not getting my best stuff. Don't even think about it. Well, you know, the thing is, as bad as his jokes are when he's on, the, on the, his, his TV and radio shows, they're actually worse in person because you're like, you can't run away. You got to stay and, 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 and listen to it. So it was pretty brutal. I, I think every time I had a chance, so I hung out with Dr. Ray and his wife, and we had a great time there. Um, so we went, Actually, yeah. okay, okay, now think about this for a second. You're, you know, you're making fun of my jokes, but I just want to share this with you. I almost did not come on the program today because about two weeks ago, all my wife's credit cards were stolen, Ugh. all of them. Well, I didn't report it because the thieves spend less than she does. <laughs> You see what I mean, you guys? Now, you can turn this off, but when you're with them in person, you can't, you can't, you can't dodge that bullet, you know. And you know this whole thing about your teddy bear incident. This was like your, this was the beginning of this. I don't know if it's post-traumatic stress syndrome or panic attack. You've experienced that. What? What? Give us a little background on on, on that. 
Anxiety is one of the main symptoms that people come to therapy for, whether it's panic attack, whether it's phobia, whether it's generalized anxiety, whether it's social anxiety. And I always wondered, Bear, when somebody comes in, they're so terrified from the anxiety attack, generally they go to the emergency room because they think they're having a heart attack. Right. They wonder if they're losing their mind. They are so unsettled by this experience. And I've never had anything like that, except this was probably about 20 years ago, I was playing softball. And I took off after a ball. And when I got to the ball, threw it in, my heart started racing, maybe 170, 180 beats per minute. I got lightheaded. I started breathing very shallow. So I knelt down in the outfield figuring, oh, and it was kind of a clinical detachment. I was, I was thinking, oh, so this is what a panic attack feels like. I always wondered what a panic attack felt like. And I was just observing it. I was studying it. I left the field. I went behind the backstop. I sat for about 20 minutes because I knew it was going to go away. You run out of adrenaline. And I thought I never understood what that came from. Why would that happen? It seems so random. I've run after balls in the outfield many times. Later on, I realized I had not eaten for 24 hours and my blood sugar had probably gotten so low that it set off this chain of events. But it was fascinating because I finally got to experience it, but I wasn't afraid of it. That's part of the problem with a panic attack. You're afraid of being afraid. And that's what keeps it rolling in the future. And so, you know, also, uh, sometimes having too much caffeine can can set it off. Like you say, not eating them enough, but it, something may trigger it. But I've been with a couple people that are going through that, and it's very real. They actually think they're dying of a heart attack. It's not like it's psychosomatic. Their, their heart is racing. I don't know to what degree it's psychosomatic, but it's a very, very real thing. Now, did, did this, this didn't come on then because you lost your teddy bear though. This was something. No, that was, no, that was way back. And I never did get that dog back. And then <laughs> the kid who took it, you know, he's old now. I didn't do anything to him. He's probably in his sixties. So I let him go. But, the, but this really is not anything to be laughed at when you're, when you're with someone that, ex, that experiences this sort of panic attack, uh, what, what can you do for them other than to say, I'm going to, but you said something very interesting it's going to end because sooner or later you run out of adrenaline. Is that right? What is, does that mean? I, I use this. Yeah. I use this analogy bear. If somebody's sitting in my office and I say, someone breaks into the room with a gun and threatens us both, we're going to react like you would react with a panic attack. Your body is going to surge. But if that person sat in my office, let's say for an hour and was still threatening, but hadn't done anything yet. I'll ask my client, would you still be at the same level of anxiety? They would say, no, I wouldn't. Why not? Well, even though I'm still at risk, even though that threat is right there, the chemicals, the noradrenaline in my body is tapering. You can't keep that state for an indefinite period of time. So I draw the parallel between that and a panic attack. It's going to go away. It's going to subside somewhat. People become so terrified of being terrified that they it's like a feedback loop, Bear. Mm. It keeps it going. You know, I've taken people to the hospital, a, a certain person to the hospital, this is like over 20 years ago, two or three times. And by the time they get to the emergency room, it seems like, you know, it subsides. But it's still a very, very real, real situation. What do you recommend for people that – what's the uh, – the behavioral modification that you can do uh, if you find yourself uh, having panic attacks. Recognize that you're not going to die. It's not going to hurt you. It is an incredibly unpleasant state, but that's it. When, when somebody first experiences it, they don't know what it is. And that's what really exaggerates the problem. Me, when I was in the outfield, I knew what it was. So therefore, I kind of sat there almost like a therapeutic observer and let it pass. For most people, I tell them, distress is not danger. Meaning, Bear, you're, you know, you're a guy's guy. You've had, you've had waves that have threatened to take your life. Mm -hmm. So when that happens, your body reacts. You go into survival mode and everything in you kicks in. 
Well, that's danger. In a panic attack, you have the same reaction, but it's not danger. It's distress. I'm upset or I am threatened by this crowd of people in a restaurant because I'm feeling claustrophobic or I have to make a left turn on a uh, a road and the stimulation is too much, or I got to give a talk before a huge group. So all, all of that response is the same response your body would do if you were in actual danger, but you're not in any danger. And when you realize that as the situation is occurring, it will temper it more quickly. You know, I, I you know, I know like in big surf, uh, a big wipeout where you're going to be held down by maybe two or three waves, maybe a 18 to 20 foot wave. I know my son Shane, who's helping with this, uh, has experienced that. And my son uh, Jeremiah, 80 foot surf. Um, the th key there is to basically, first you go in the fetal position so your arms don't get ripped off, but actually it's a good place to be. And you have to, you have to calm yourself. Uh, uh, fighting the wave or, or, or panicking under the water isn't going to help you at all. And, uh, and so the best way to do is just kind of relax. And, and then when the wave releases you, then you go to the surface. And I think that sign's kind of like a panic attack. We're talking with Dr. Ray. He is a living, breathing panic attack. When you see him, <laughs> run for your life because he's going to grab you and he's going to tell you some terrible dad-type jokes. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back with my friend, Dr. Ray. That's right. I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, we have our, our new website is up, Matt Meeks. Uh, Helped us do it with his people, Matt Smith and Ryan Thomas and Colleen Monroe. We have a brand new website up. And we need for you to go and check it out. And we want to invite you men to join Bears Man Cave. In fact, if you were a member, uh, this is a recorded show, but tonight we're doing one of our famous meetups. We do a video chat room so all the men get together from all over the world. And I get to interview one of the guys, get to know each other a little bit better. And then we do a two-way conversation uh, where we read through one of my books. Maybe we only get through a couple paragraphs, but we use that book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, as kind of a starter to get men talking with each other about real, about real life. And then on the, uh, what you do when you become a member of Bear's Man Cave, you get access to a private Facebook group, and uh, we post, uh, it's secret, secret Facebook group. But we may post something from John Wayne or John Paul II, but we uh, encourage, we challenge, we equip, we mobilize and you, you develop a brotherhood with the men at the, in the man cave. But then we encourage you to start your own man cave. Have a bunch of guys over, smoke some of the Bears Man Cave cigars, and, and, um, and sit on your back uh, deck and, uh, and have a shot of whiskey, but then open up my book or some other book and kind of read through. Like my book uh, talks about the virtues. It's a great way for men to kind of get traction. But start to bring men over that have never even been to church or who had never haven't gone to church in years and who you could never get to go to a That Man Is You program or something like that, bring them to your back porch and, and evangelize through friendship. And then at time you can bring them to a more of a formational type environment like That Man Is You. But we need, a, we need to develop friendship. I've really been convicted by the Holy Spirit lately that I've neglected my friends and <clears throat> my friendships. And so every Sunday afternoon for an hour, I, I, call, uh, I call people. I may only have one conversation but I remember how valuable and how much I cherish my friendships. So, and one of those friends we have with us today, everyone needs one of those kind of friends, you know, that kind of, I don't know, you know, how in the world did that guy become my friend? He just kind of hangs on and gloms on to you, wants to always go bowling or something like that. <laughs> Actually, one of the most fun people I know, uh, we just spent uh, several days together at the Napa Institute, Dr. Ray Garendi. Aloha, Ray. Welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. 
Hey, Bear, you know the problem with doing your show? I'm so good looking. Can, no, what? Well, yeah, you, yeah, you've got all the pixelated stuff. I, it's amazes, it amazes me how they can Photoshop you on Skype live. But live. See this? Me. This is a pretzel. Yes. Now, for those of you watching on YouTube, uh, when I do the radio show, I can have the pretzel because nobody knows I'm eating the pretzel. But it looks like but a on cigar. This, yeah. Yeah, I can't do the pretzel. Well, when you have the TV show, by the way, I heard you had a really great guest on your show last year. Uh, you had the he bear. was the he was the second toughest guy I've ever had on my show. The first was me. The second right. was you. Yeah, and you know I think um, you need to change the name of the show. You should call it uh, what is it called? Living well with Doctor Ray. And it should living be right with Doctor Ray. We're gonna we're gonna title it Living Aware with Bear. Yeah, that sounds good. No, I think you can keep your Living Right with Doctor Ray, starring Bear Wozniak. <laughs> I think that'd be really good. Hey, we got to get you on our TV show one of these days. Do you come, want to come out to Hawaii in September and help us shoot Long Ride Home? Oh, that'd be that, – well, do, do, can I be like a passenger on a motorcycle? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to throw you on an outrigger canoe, an eight-man canoe, or get you <laughs> surfing or something, get you to develop another uh, – I don't know. We'll ha get you to develop some deeper awareness of yourself. Hey, so this does is the, one thing. Yeah, go ahead. Does the canoe have to be in the water? It has to be in the water. We could do something like that. We could do a fake, a fake thing. We're in the water. You know, we had a guy last year on our ride. I won't mention his name, but he said, I was just in the, I was in the pursuit vehicle last year. I was a cast member, but I want to ride a motorcycle this year. And he goes, but I'm just going to trailer it and I'll just use the ride it when we're in a, you know, when you need me to. And I go, we don't do that. We don't allow posers on our show. So he said, well, I'm going to bring the trailer. I'm going to, I'm going to hire someone to drive my old clunker car and pull the trailer. I thought, okay, that's fine, but that doesn't mean I'm going to let you ride, you know, put your motorcycle on. We'll, we'll just keep that in case we need it for something. 500 miles into the first day, which we rode a long day, long first day, I think four mi 400 miles into it, that trailer and that truck uh, broke down. So this guy had to ride the whole, whole, whole way um, through the freezing rain. He didn't put a, a windscreen up on his motorcycle, so it's freezing rain going right in his face. And, uh, so yeah, no posers allowed on long ride home. But we we might find a way to put you into a we'll put you we'll get you on one of those fake horses and and we'll 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 drive it in a truck and we'll drive beside it and film it, make it look like you're riding a horse and we'll, well get you, you know a you mentioned this, Bear, but I have to tell you now you're making fun of something you don't know about because my wife and I on our first date, we went horseback riding. So Last week when we had our anniversary, she said, Ray, can we go horseback riding again like we did when we were younger? I said, sure. So we went horseback riding for about an hour and a half until we ran out of quarters. Did you? Hey, that, that's <laughs> now. Did you guys ride on the same the same uh, horse? Yeah. Yeah. You know, were you in front or she went, in, were she in front or you kind of went like this? <laughs> that's great, man. Well, nowadays you can just put your credit card in and let it run forever, can't you? That is true. <laughs> Actually, Cindy and I got to ride, go up to Tom Equals Ranch. He's the Archbishop Winsky's, one of his best friends from way back in college. And we got to go ride horses just before we, we went to Napa. And she's a, she's a rodeo girl. That's why she took you in the arm wrestling contest, I think. But Hey, we, inquiring minds want to know, how mm -hmm. does the Dr. Ray happen? I mean, what, what's your, you know, give us kind of not the CV version, a little bit more enhanced of, of you know, your background and your walk with the Lord and, you know, where you how you became this caricature of, of, of yourself. This it was an happen. accident. Ah, Seriously. Yeah. I went to school for engineering. I went to a place called Case Institute of Technology in Cleveland. After the first year of engineering, I decided this really wasn't for me. And I realized that when I scored a 33% on my physics final, which it's pretty hard to recover from a 33%. Truly. Yeah. So then I said, well, I'll tell you what, let's go into law and I'll get a degree in psychology before I go into law. I realized this psychology thing was getting pretty interesting. And I mm. said, let me try to get a master's degree. So I got a master's and I realized you can't do a whole lot with a master's. You don't have independence. So I kept going. I got a Ph.D. and there I was going to do what all psychologists do. You go into an office you sit for 10 hours. You see client after client after client after client. I did that for about 10, 12 years, and it fried my brain out is essentially what it did. At that point, 
I wrote my first book way, way back, 1984. I was uh, I was in middle school in 1984, mm -hmm. and I wrote my first book. As was I. Yes, yeah, you were. I was the seventh grade. You were fourth, I think. Well, fourth, like fourth grade is one of the four best years of my life. So, <laughs> I stood behind. You proceeded, but I stayed behind. Hey, I, from what I hear, Barry, you were an honor student. Yes, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. <laughs> I never apologized. <laughs> So what happened over time, it just, uh, I used to entertain in nightclubs. I'd sing and play the organ in nightclubs. And as a result, I kind of had this natural bent towards public speaking. And that's what I drifted toward. This public speaking led to media, led to where I am now. And But, but I want to know about your walk with the Lord. How, how did that develop as you were from, was it from your younger, from your youth that you were raised Catholic? Or how did that develop in you? I left, the Catholic, I, I left the Catholic Church when I was in my early 30s. I wasn't, I wasn't angry at her. I was indifferent. I was a new atheist, Bear. Uh, the old atheists make sense. There is no God, therefore I can do what I want. I was a new atheist, which is very common nowadays, which is there is a God, but he thinks just like me. Ooh. I left the church. Yeah, I left the church. Wow. Uh, I drifted into the evangelical world. I was in there for eight years. At one point, I was doing three Bible studies a week. I had a prison ministry. I was deeply immersed in the evangelical world, and that is when the problem started. I do not mean this in any way, Bear, to impugn the many wonderful Christians of other faith traditions. They love the Lord. I couldn't deal with what I saw was the incoherency of the system I was in, the Protestant system, uh, what they believed about the Bible, what they believed about salvation, didn't make sense to me. It contradicted itself. I'll give you a small example. Where I was, we believed once saved, always saved. That's, you know, a nice Protestant evangelical view of things. You accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you're in, you got it. Do not pass, go, salvation assured. I remember asking the question at one point of a very wise Protestant minister. So what would happen if after 22 years of being saved, having the assurance of salvation, I decided I was going to leave my wife and children, move in with another woman, walk away from church, not go back? Not at all live as a Christian. And he said, well, you must not have been saved to begin with. I said, that makes no sense. How could I have not have been saved to begin with when for 22 years you told me I had the assurance of salvation? You know and what, I could Doc, only... Doc, we got to yes. take a break here, but that nails it on the head. I want to come back and talk more about exactly that. Uh, your okay. path and my path are almost directly consistent. Even with the prison ministry and all the Bible studies, it's just so so interesting. That's why we both turned out so so strange, I guess. But we're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi. This is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We got our most adventurous adventure guide that we've had on our show all day. Uh, we'll be right back. Hey, man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I have his, I. I Normally give our guests a little bit longer break, but as soon as I saw Dr. Ray put a pretzel in his mouth on my YouTube channel, I thought I'm going to catch him mid-bite and <laughs> make him choke on that pretzel. Oh, he doesn't even care. Now, he, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see he's, he's got it, that big old pretzel, almost like it's a cigar. But we're talking with Dr. Ray Garendi, uh, a friend of mine who I just, wow, I, I, I enjoy every moment that I'm with him. There's a certain uh, joy in the Lord and, we're, and, and, and a certain depth that kind of go hand in hand. We're talking about this kind of parallel path that we walked when I was in my early, I think late 20s and early 30s. I wanted to go deeper with God, and I, wasn't, I was under catechized, and I kind of drifted into the evangelical world, found wonderful, wonderful people there. But over time, 
some of the things that they teach, such as once saved, always saved, uh, just kind of collapse in on themselves. And so I, I eventually made my return. Dr. Ray was saying, so you were saying that if you were, if, if, if you have that assurance of being saved, 22 years and one day go by and you start cheating on your wife or, or you, you, uh, you kill someone or something, the, the, the answer to once saved, always saved is what again? I was told that I must not have been saved to begin with, because if I were, in fact, legitimately Holy Spirit saved, I couldn't have done that. That made and, no sense to me. Right. And what else, what else started to fall, fall in on itself? You know, the Bible. Uh, of course, in the evangelical world where I was, we had to, with the help of the Holy Spirit, read the Bible, study the Bible, get the Bible, understand Christianity, doctrine, morality. Wonderful. The problem is, I didn't know what to believe because the more I got deeper into the evangelical world, the more disagreement I saw. Oh yeah, you uh, know, I went, I went to a, I went to a, a conference a, a year ago, a National Religious Broadcaster Conference. Every booth had a different doctrine. You know, it just yes. it's like a, a spiritual stew. And when you listen to, I'm just going to be honest. I mean, I love my 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 brothers and sisters in the Protestant area, but. When you listen to Christian radio, every show has a different doctrine, and you find yourself always having to sift through it. Is this right, or how much of this can I take? It's too much. It's too much work to even listen to some of the teaching to try to glean from it the the best of it. So, so you begin to say, wonder. You saw the inconsistency among the different teachers. Absolutely, and I couldn't fathom that Saint Peter. If somebody would have come up to Saint Peter and said, "Well, you know, Peter." You think that you should baptize a baby, but but I don't. Or you think that the bread and wine become the body and blood of our Savior, but I don't. Uh, and you think that uh, you can pray to the Blessed Virgin for help. Well, at that time, the Blessed Virgin was still alive. But you can pray <laughs> to the departed saints, but I don't. Let's just agree to disagree. Okay, St. Peter? Now, I wouldn't have called him St. Peter. would have called him Mr. Peter. But let's just agree to disagree. I couldn't fathom that the early church would allow that kind of diffuse doctrine or morality. Where I was, uh, they believed that pro-life was an absolute of the Christian faith. And I remember in one Bible study looking at the pastor's wife and saying, so, life in the womb is life. Yes. Uh, is that a given of Christianity? Yes. Are you then willing to say that probably half of the Protestant world doesn't agree with you and doesn't teach that? So I, it was, it was, I'll tell you, Bear, it was a Christian identity crisis for me. I was at the lowest point in my Christianity. There was no, I didn't know what, you know, and, you know no, think, think about, you know, in the early church, you see it in, in the book of Acts, uh, when, when, when Paul was out evangelizing and he would evangelize the, to the Jews first and then the Gentiles. And uh, there became that, uh, after he would come and evangelize, when he would leave, people would come up from Israel who were Christians, believers, the Judaizers, they, they were called, and they would come up and say, well, you really can't be a Christian unless you're circumcised and follow the, the rules. And, you know, what's so cool is the way Paul handled that was to go to Jerusalem and meet with Peter and the other apostles. There was, a, there was an ecumenical council right there. It's so wonderful. There's two things. When you really... And, you know, I teach a Catholic catechism every morning with the sunrise, ocean ri uh, behind me, the sun rising, and I read line by line through the catechism. And it, it's so, every single word is so powerful, and it all makes total sense. It all agrees totally with Scripture, and, uh, and I know there is a teaching authority. How did you, so, so, so number one was um, your challenge with uh, once saved, always saved. Number two was sola scriptura. How do I know? I mean, even Martin Luther and Zwingli, within two years, they had great disagreement about the Bible that they said anyone could easily understand, that the Holy Spirit re would reveal to them. What was the next thing on your path back to Rome? The argument that I heard was, Ray, you're not being fair. We agree on the basics. And I remember asking, who determines the basics? What are the basics? You know, I minored in philosophy, Bear, and philosophy is one of those degrees that messes up your head for the rest of your life. So that explains you. Okay, I was wondering. Yes, what it does. Yeah. 
in philosophy, they have circular reasoning. And that would be, for example, we agree on the basics. What are the basics? Uh, the basics what are what we agree, we agree on. What we agree on, yeah. So why are they the basics? Because we agree upon them. So there really are, <laughs> there really are no things you can bite down on and say that is the established basics. And as a result, I remember thinking, I can't fathom. Now remember, I came from an engineering background. We couldn't agree to disagree. If we had the wrong formulas, the bridge would fall down. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. Yeah. I remember thinking. Would our Lord be any less definitive in his teaching? Would he come to earth, give us a body of teaching, put people in charge, and then say, well, after that, it's kind of going to go in every direction, and you folks just sort of got to figure out what the truth is, and, and hopefully you'll have a sincere heart, and that'll be fine. Yeah, you know, it's so strange. When I, when I'm, when I sit with you, and we're, and we're having lunch or coffee or whatever we're having, and there's other Catholics around us, uh, for example, the Napa Institute, we're so excited to talk about humana vitae or the— or certain parts of the catechism, or the truth of the church, and we just affirm it, affirm it, affirm it, we get it. It makes spiritual, rational sense to us. But how many Bible studies, every Bible study I've ever been to, someone will say, well, I think this means this, and I think this means that, and it seems, seems like so naive. I'd rather, I'd rather understand what Augustine thought it meant, or Thomas Aquinas thought it meant, or what the church teaches. So, yeah, you, sometimes you, I don't mean to denigrate the people who, because they love Jesus, but sometimes you feel like you're swimming in the shallow end of the pool. At least I did. I wanted to go deeper. I wrestled, Bear, for a long time with why so many God-seeking, good Christians never went any further in looking at the Catholic Church. I've come to several conclusions. One, you do need a certain amount of humility. You have to say, I can't figure out everything. I don't know everything. And I, in fact, could be wrong. That's one. Two, many people are very content with where they are. They believe they're saved. They love the Lord. And that's enough. Okay? That's pretty much where they're at. There's no reason to go any further. And unless they look at the system that they're in and become discontent like I did, there is no reason to look at any other system. They're already convinced that the Catholic Church is wrong. They know that. They know Jesus is Lord and the Catholic Church is wrong. Those are the two pillars that they know. So as a result, many, many good Christians don't even consider remotely looking at the Catholic Church. Not at all. I, w I was, I was uh, at the beach about four years ago, and our, our, our Catholic Church came down, and they sponsored my tandem surfing event. So we're, we did the tandem surfing, and then there, right next to us was the, the, the Surfers for Christ, I think is what it's called. And I heard them coaching. They were saying, now you go up and down the beach, and you hand out these tracks, and you ask someone if they're saved. And if they're saved, that means that uh, you don't need to lead them to Christ. They're fine just the way they are. But, uh, and, and go on to the next person. And then one of them came up to me and said, you know what? I have a friend who had a friend, and he told me that when— Pope John Paul II, on his deathbed, had a conversion experience and gave his life to Jesus Christ. And when you hear that, the ignorance often too, and the you know it's like Fulton Sheen said, if I believed what most non-Catholics think Catholics believe, I would be a heretic. I, I don't you know I wouldn't be a, a Catholic either. But that's why I love every morning sharing on the Ocean Sunrise Catechism on Facebook the line by line going through the catechism because it's well i heard a priest over here once said this or i had a priest over there once said that no it's what the official teaching of the church is we're talking with dr ray garendi uh very similar path back to the catholic church uh, very similar path when we were away from the catholic church and and uh, so glad to have him on my show i got to invite everybody to please go to our new website deepadventure.com uh, we have my books deep adventure the way of Heroic Virtue, and Deep in the Wave, a surfing guide to the soul there for you. Dr. Ray, where, where, where's the best way for them to find you in all, in, in all of your books? Two places, Bear. One uh, website, drray.com, D-R-R-A-Y.com, and then Facebook. That's the two places. You know, it's or only, my mother's basement. There's a, it, there's a thousand books in my mother's basement. So the, so the only place really that Dr. Ray has any friends is Facebook anyway, probably. And I have 12 friends. <laughs> 
Well, listen, you guys, go, go, to, go to our website, deepadventure.com. And women, it's a great place for you to go and sign up your man for Bear's Man Cave. You, can, you go there, click on the Bear's Man Cave link, and uh, get your husband, your brother, your, your son to join the Man Cave. They'll find a lot of uh, they'll, the First of all, they'll be challenged in our private Facebook group. They'll enjoy joining us on our video chat meetups, and uh, we will challenge, equip, and mobilize them. We'll be right back with our last segment because Dr. Ray has his own radio show he's got to go do. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We have Dr. Ray Garendi with us. We've only got six minutes with him because he's got to go do his own show. Dr. Ray, what do you have to say to men uh, t- today? What, what would be your challenge uh, to men? I will begin that with a survey. Survey said, if a mom and a dad bring a child to church, he has a good chance of going to church as an adult. If mom alone brings the child to church, the chance as an adult that that child will go to church drops precipitously. If dad alone brings the child to church, the chances that the child will be in church as an adult are equal to mom and dad both. So when our Lord said, men, take the reins, don't stand back and let the women lead us. I think we got to become men again, Bear, in the best sense of the word, strong, faithful, and the authorities in our home with our children quit letting our wives do the majority of the disciplining. What do, what do, how do you define a, a man? What would, what would be his, 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 okay, typical week of a, of a good father? So let's start out with fathers. How would he start his days? I didn't do this, Bear, and it's one of my regrets. When the kids were growing up, they needed to see me pray more. They needed to see me at the side of my bed kneeling down as opposed to being under the covers and saying my prayers where nobody knew I was praying. They needed to see me ask questions about the faith. When we'd come back from church, maybe say, what do you think father meant when he said this? In other words, they needed to see me incorporate what we believe into the day-to-day life. Something I let slip. Okay, part of that, again, was when I was in the evangelical world, my kids were little. That's a factor. I think another factor is they've got to see me stand up to a culture that isn't on our side anymore, Bear. That culture doesn't think like we do. So they got to see their dad being strong in the face of that culture and not a wimp keeping his opinions to himself. So it's not yelling at the TV in the evening. It's it's actually doing something about it. If you believe in pro-life what are you doing about it are you are you marching are you praying are you praying the rosary with your children are you helping establish a crisis pregnancy center not just an opinion but a way of living Um, i got a question for you what do you this is a different sort of thing what do you say to the men who kind of i don't know how to say it but they they have a woman and she's on the pill they get to have sex with her whenever they want they tell her that they love her but they don't settle down they don't marry her uh Humana Vitae came out 50 years ago, and uh, the Pope said came out strongly against contraceptions. What do you think about this whole fact? Now you see so many Christian men that are just living with their women. They make no commitment, and the women allow them to get away with it. I mean, that, to me, that is a gutless, uh, coward, a man lacking in any virtue to do that. So I, I just would you get would you uh. What would you say to that man right now who's in that type of relationship? God's morals work so that even if that man sees nothing wrong with what he's doing, you ask him, what does he want for himself out of this relationship? What is he hoping to achieve, to get? And then show him that 
what he's doing is not going to get him there. What he is doing is, in fact, going to defeat the very things he wants. A good relationship with that woman. Children that are going to be part of a lifelong commitment. Everything that he may say he wants, if he, compl- if he claims to be a Christian now, he is sabotaging in the way he's doing it. God's system works. And we think about, too, then the young men. I have so many Christian women, come, young women come up to me and go, where are the men? You know, they won't ask us out on a date, and when they do, they date us, but they never, it never gets serious. When, where did all the men go? And I don't tell men they need to be masculine anymore. I tell them they need to be manly. Learn to the, make a commitment. Be devoted and cherish a woman and marry her. All of the research in psychology, Bear, says the same thing. Marriage is good for men. It domesticates us. It, it socializes us. It makes us grow up. Amen. Everything, even, even, even if you, dis, you strip it from its morality, strip it from its religious base, it simply is psychologically the best way to live. You know what? When I drop into a big wave, like a 20-foot-plus wave, you got to really want it, and you got to dedicate yourself 100% paddling as hard as you can. You got to totally commit. And when you do, you have the ride of your life, or you might have a big wipeout. But there's something about the context of a committed relationship where the hammer and the chisel get out, and God really goes to work on a man to help him grow, and to develop virtue, and to become more like Jesus. We need men to be men again. Uh, give us one more. Give us one more encouragement or challenge for the men that are listening? Everybody at the very core of their being wants to be loved. That's how God made us, whether you believe in God or whether you don't. That is what we are. The only way that will happen in in the depth that God meant is that we commit to one woman for life ourselves. Anything that we fall short of that is going to lead to some level of dissatisfaction. And all of the research now points to that for the first time in our history of our country, the lifespan of men is going down. It is no longer going up. It is now receding. So obviously, it's not working for us. And I say to the guys, just like I said in my evangelical search, the evangelical world was unsettling me. So I looked elsewhere and I saw back to the Catholic Church. Hey, gentlemen, if you are not content in the way you're pursuing life or pursuing relationships, look at an alternative. See what the Catholic Church has to say about the best way to live. Dr. Ray, do we got to let you go? Well, I'm telling you, I want to say one final thing before we go, Bear. It's all yours. I'm, I'm a little disappointed in you because I held you in high regard When we were talking over at Napa, I saw some pictures of how you were doing tandem surfing and holding people above your head and winning world championships and all of that. So then you call me for this radio show. We're Skyping it. We're YouTubing it. And I'm looking at your studio. uh, You're sitting on a chair. I would have expected you would have at least been on a surfboard in the water doing the interview. You know what? I'm not all that impressed. I don't want to. I don't want to show you up. It's an act of humility. That's all. And, and Dr. Not, Ray, I was totally yes. expecting you to be in a, uh, a padded cell, which if you could see him on YouTube, yes, he is. There it is. and so you didn't disappoint me at all. It was fully, <laughs> fully what I expect. Dr. Ray, where can they find you again? Dr. Ray.com. D R R A Y.com bear. And your radio show is the doctor is in, and that's on EWTN. What time? At is one o'clock Eastern time. And, and, and life, living, living, living right with Dr. Ray is the TV show. That is 10 p.m. Saturday nights, Eastern time, and a couple more times during the week. Yeah. Well, we love you. Love you, Ray. I can hardly wait to see you again. We've got to find some excuse to get together, but love to being with you at the Nappy Institute. Thanks, Bear. Okay. We're going we're gonna to let Ray, Dr. Ray go. He's got to go do his radio show, but we'll continue with the Bear Wozniak adventure here for a couple more minutes. Thanks, Ray, for being with us. God bless, buddy. Okay, brother. Aloha. So Dr. Ray was talking to us, challenging men, and one of the things, I've only got a minute or two to get out, to, to stay in my soapbox, and that is 50 years ago, Humana Vitae came out, and the Pope was saying 
to avoid contraceptive care, to, to avoid contraception. Uh, you know, and I look at the women and they take this pill, which really destroys the natural order of their body. It seems like the most unhealthy thing that they could do to their body. It's not natural. It's not, doesn't conform with natural law. And men uh, will use condoms uh, also. But it seems like what's happened since I was a kid, when I was, when I was a kid, there was a girl next door that got pregnant. I said, how did that happen? I thought you could only get pregnant if you were married. I didn't understand the mechanics. And between the time I was six years old and the time I got out of high school, there was this massive revolution. The, the free love era had begun. And you know what it is? It's just a basic, big cop-out. Uh, men, men can have sex with a woman. She doesn't, it's not necessarily in a committed relationship. They're kind of, the men are kind of getting out of it what they want. There's no commitment to protect, to provide. There's no commi commitment in the procreation. A fourth of all the children today are being raised by a single parent. And then women have broken the social contract they, what they have with other women uh, to, have, to not have sex before marriage. And so a good woman wants to date a man, and all the other women are saying, well, don't date her, date me. We can have sex before we're married. And it kind of breaks the whole social contract. We need to get back to humane vitae. We need to get back to natural family planning. We need to get back to, to uh, abstaining before marriage. We need to get back to a man cherishing, being devoted, and loving a woman. Men are meant to procreate. God the Father eternally begot his son. Men, you are meant to be a father and to procreate. You're meant to protect a woman and your family. You're meant to provide. You're meant to be a hero. And men, stop using women. Start cherishing them. If you're with a woman now and you're not married to her, develop a path towards marriage with her. Seek out your pastor and get, oh, give that woman the love and the cherish and the devotion that she deserves from you. Go to our website, deepadventure.com, you guys. Subscribe to our website. And also go to our YouTube channel, which you can watch this show on uh, Bear Wozniak YouTube channel. And we need you to subscribe. We need about 600 more subscribers. And if we do, YouTube said they'll blow us up, our ministry up bigger. So please help us out. We love you guys. Men, you're better than that. You're better than that. Cherish your woman. Aloha. This is Bear Wozniak with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. And viva Cristo Rey! Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Plus, good stuff happens when you support us at patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure. You get instant access to every radio show, Bear Wozniak Adventure, and our TV episodes, Long Ride Home, the instant we produce them, months before they even air. Plus, we give you all kinds of free stuff, coffee cups, t-shirts, and other things like that. Go to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure and become our patron. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that bell.